Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about fog in Redshift. It's a super simple effect to do, but there are a few gotchas that are worth talking about. By the end of this lesson you'll be able to incorporate fog into your scenes to take them to the next level. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. Okay, so today we're talking about fog with Inside Redshift. We all know it and love it. We see it everywhere in the Instagram feeds and luckily for us, it's pretty easy to do. Um, so because it's so easy, uh, I'm just gonna jump right in and just show you guys how to turn it on and get you the information that you need. Um, and then the second part is gonna be, I would say a little bit more advanced, although uh, environmental fog with Inside Redshift is not really advanced. Um, it's quite simple to do, but I do think that there are some cryptic things that didn't quite make sense to myself at first when I was learning it um, and I thought it would be good to share it with you all right so let's do it let's jump in so first things first with fog with fog you need some sort of light source so in our case we have a stoplight um, that is going to be our light source so with inside that stoplight I have um, three separate lights for each one and I just named them Q just for the sake of uh, so I can easily reference them so uh, those are going to be our three light sources and then we want those light sources to uh, generate a fog, right? So how do we get this light to actually do that? Super simple. All you need to do is go up to Redshift and you want to go to Objects and create a Redshift environment. Okay. So pretty much everything you see in the world has, some, <laughs> has an environment in it, it has some sort of um, density to it and that's what the redshift environment does it creates it creates that density right like even if it's even if it's so minor that your eye can't really detect it it still is there and it, it does affect the way that things look in the real world um, so it's always a good idea maybe to put some of the environment into your scene even if it's just a little bit just to kind of give it that real world feel um, so once you put in the redshift environment what you're going to have here is you're gonna, it's gonna instantly take you to something called volume scattering. Now, this, once again with Redshift, the, I, th I think that the, the way they, they label things is a little too real world sometimes, for better or worse, I don't know. But it's pretty easy, I'll break it down. So scattering is basically the power. Um, attenuation is um, how thick the air is, right? So how thick your, how thick your fog is. And then phase is basically um, the direction uh, that it faces towards the camera, which I'll show you uh, in practice. All right, so you're probably asking, how do we turn this on? Well, the power's on, right? So let's just turn up the power. Eh, nothing happens. All right, so what you need to do is it's a two-step process. So you need to put an environment, but you also need to tell your lights that they need to be emitting uh, this volume fog, right? So let's go to our lights. I'm just gonna hit Q here and search for them. I'm gonna select them all. And then right here underneath your volume tab, you have something called contribution scale. So this is basically just how powerful the contribution uh, of this light will be with fog, right? So let's just set it to one and see what happens. So when you set it to one, it kind of goes nuts, right? It's, it's really powerful. And I'm guessing that's probably because it's real world, um, uh, units that they're using, right? So most of the time I set it to point 0.1 because point 0.1 kind of gets you a little closer to where you need to be. And it's uh, kind of the right, um, yeah, it's, it just feels better usually. It's a good jumping off point. And then from there you can kind of go further or not further. So you can think of contribution scale as your power, right? But you might be saying, well, I thought that this was the power up here. So I thought in the redshift environment that this was the power. It is. <laughs> so you can think of this as this is your overall power. So this is going to affect everything. But with inside, uh, well, let me, so let me set this to point two. So it's going to make everything brighter and thicker and thicker, right? Well, why do that? Well, what if you wanted, what if you wanted this red light to be more powerful than this green light? Okay, well, then I would come in and I would go to my my lights here and I'd go to my red light and I would make this like 0.5, right? So now it's gonna be more powerful and then let's make my green light like 0 0.05, oops, not 100, 0 0.05. So now what you have is you have the red light that's much more powerful um, than the green light. 
So what it does is it gives you like two layers of control. You can say like, all right, I want this light to have a lot of fog and I want this light to have a little bit of fog. And then you have kind of like your master power up here, which is, um, yeah, the scattering. So again, if I take this to 0.5, it's gonna make yeah, everything brighter. Everything that has um, the volume uh, set to it. All right, so let's go ahead and let's set everything back to the same. Let's go 0.1. All right, and then what I wanna do is I wanna go back to my Redshift environment. Okay, so let's talk about um, the tint. Tint is nothing more than what you think it is. It's the color, so if I put this to blue, it's gonna kinda of tint everything blue, right? And then it's gonna kinda of blend with whatever colors you have happening already. That's all that does. Um, attenuation, okay, so attenuation is exactly uh, what I mentioned earlier. It's kinda like how dense the air is. And basically, you can think of it as like a fall off. So the further things get away from the light, um, the less powerful they're gonna be. So if I start to turn this up, I'm just gonna go to like a side view here. If I start to turn this up, you'll see over here that um, it's gonna start fading off, oops, off, off, off. And then really it's just gonna kinda keep it as close to the light as, as, it, as it can be. So it's really like how thick the air is, right? So it's like if you have a light and it's really foggy, the, f the thicker that air is, um, the further away you are from it, you're not gonna be able to actually see that light, right? It's only at the, the actual, like, the location of the light that it becomes uh, more powerful. All right, so attenuation you can think of as fall off, right? The, 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 the further away um, from the light, the more it's gonna fall off. So let's just set that back to zero. All right, phase. Once again, phase is a little tricky the way it sounds, but it's actually quite simple. So if we go back to our hero angle, so all phases is basically the direction, right? So if if a light is facing the camera, how powerful is that light gonna be versus a light that's not facing the camera, all right? So to demonstrate, it's almost just easier just to demonstrate. So we have a light that's facing the camera, you know, somewhat facing the camera, and then we have a light that's not facing the camera. So, um, when we go in the direction to the right, you'll see that this light dims down and this light gets really bright, right? So let's go in the opposite direction. And now you'll see that this light's like beaming out, kind of ridiculous, uh, but it's, it's beaming out this way and this light is getting less. So I think as I normally do, if I just kind of scroll it for you, you'll see kind of the difference. See, it's, it's putting the fog on the lights that are facing away from the camera versus if I put it over here, it's going to put on the lights. The fog is going to be more directed to the lights that are facing the camera. Maybe if I do a top view too, this might help. Something like this maybe. Okay, so this light is really facing us, but if I go in this direction, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put it on the back lights. Um... And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's useful too, because it, it just gives you nice different looks sometimes. Like it gives you these looks that, uh, you know, if I set it like here, it's just kind of like, hmm, it's kind of in the middle, right? But if I set it like, oh, I want to be a little more powerful here, then I, I have that option. And then of course I could play with my, you know, my, my intensities and everything. That's not what I meant to do, 0 0.05. You just play with your intensities. And then you can kind of dial it in you know how you want um, so that's what that does uh, phase is basically the direction of the camera uh, di the direction um, of the lights how they're facing the camera so again if it's if it's facing the camera it's to the right and then if it's not facing the camera like this one it's gonna put more emphasis on the fog for that um, and then Past that, we have um, fog, which I'm gonna do in part two. I'll, I'll get to that in just a minute. It's a little confusing. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just your ray contributions, you know, how it's actually, you know, is it, are they gonna be in your reflections? Are they gonna be in your GI, et cetera? Um, and then your alpha replace. So alpha replace, all this is, is if we go to our alpha here, we can see that um, 
yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty white right now, and that's because it's being filled up with fog. But if we turn this off, it takes that alpha out, right? Like, so all the alpha that the fog created, uh, it takes it out. So that's all that does. You might want that for, um, yeah, for your rendering purposes, but it's still in here, right? And the only difference is, is that it takes the alpha out. And that's it, man. Like, it's so easy. Um, so easy to put fog. Where it gets tricky is just finding the balance, right? Like, how, how do I actually balance this? Um, and another thing to note is your size actually does matter with fog, too. So if I go to my lights here and um, I increase their intensity, let's just double their intensity to, like, 80. That increases my fog intensity, right? Um, because that's kind of what it would do in the real world. If I go to, like... 150 it's going to be nuts right it gets brighter and brighter and brighter and this is once again where it becomes a dance you have to figure out what works for you and uh, what the balance is um, it also is the same with scale if i come here and if i if i make this light be like 10 by 10 by 10 you're going to see that it's going to affect the way it looks right there's like less fog now and you would think there would be more um, but yeah, I, I'm not really sure why that is. I'm, I, I would think there would be more too. So I'm not really sure why, but <laughs> size does actually, size matters. Um, so just think about that and, and just be aware that if you change the scale of something, it's going to affect the way that it looks. So I would imagine if I go one, 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 it's probably gonna be brighter. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's kind of almost flipped to what you would think it would be. I assume it's, I don't know why that's, that's strange interesting if you guys know why let me know um but yeah just 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 be mindful that your scale does matter and uh it'll affect the way the fog looks all right so that's it for part one super easy um to understand uh part two i want to jump over to a different scene actually um let's go to part two now in this scene what i have is i just have like uh, a bunch of trees that um yeah, they're just on like a landscape object or whatever. And the reason why I did this is because I want to show you um, this other part of the environment, which is called fog. All right, so let's do the same thing we did. I'm just going to go to my shortcuts here. I'm going to do a redshift environment. Okay, let's add that environment. And as we would expect, nothing happens. So let's this time, instead of... Um, Oops, instead of going to our general setting, let's actually add some fog, right? Um, now, what is fog? I thought we just did fog. Well, it's actually different. It's like it's like a real world kind of like um, earth fog is how you can think of it. There's like a horizon and stuff like that. It's not light dependent. It's more earth dependent. It's like your environment dependent. Not It's not about lights. So think of the top as about your lights and this is actually about like your atmosphere. Um, so let's go to our fog and let's just like put up the height. Okay, well, nothing happens. All right, well, that's weird. Um, and then let's go to here, nothing happens. All right, maybe it's because it's black, I need to make it white. Nope, nothing happens. Why is nothing happening? Well, this is also is kind of strange. Um, I think it's a little not intuitive, but um, what you need to do is, the first thing you need to do is, um, yeah, you need to make your emission. Uh, this is essentially the color. Um, you need to make this not white, uh, not black. Any color but black, because this is also kind of like your power. So let's just put it white for now. We're pretty close to white. All right, and then you need to step up here to your attenuation. Now, if you remember um, earlier, I mentioned that attenuation is, it's basically the density of your air, right? It's like how thick the fog is. So as soon as we bring this up a little bit, you're gonna see that we all of a sudden told that fog to be thick. All right, this fog that we put here with no lights, there's no lights happening here right now. Um, this is just like a, yeah, like a um, proprietary thing that's in here. Um, and uh, no lights and um, we are able to create fog and it has a fall off and everything. But where's that fall off coming from? Um, you know, how do I control that fall off? Uh, how does that work? And um, basically that works with your attenuation, right? Your attenuation is again, your fall off. So how, how thick the air is. So if you're in the woods and you're walking through the woods and it's really foggy, you're not gonna be able to see a stuff further away from you more. You're just gonna really be able to see a stuff that's right in front of you, right? So if I pull this camera out, you're gonna see, like imagine walking up 
to the woods, you know, those, those are going to get clearer and clearer and clearer the closer that you get to them. So once again, that's attenuation, right? So if I keep pumping this up, eventually it's going to go away. It's just going to turn white, but you can really kind of play with it and dial it into how you like, you know, something like that. You step back, eventually it's going to disappear, right? Because the further away you get from things, yeah, the tougher it is to see, especially in the fog. Um, it's kind of a cool way to do a fake a depth pass too. Um, I know sometimes with compositing we have to do that, so uh, maybe another little trick. Um, okay, so that's that. Uh, you can change the color if you want. If I just want this to be like blue or something, I can do that. Blade Runner, whatever it is. Um, you can do all that stuff. So that's pretty simple. And again, you control it with um, with the attenuation, right? So you might think like, all right, well, phase and all that works. Phase doesn't work. Um, and yeah, scattering doesn't work either. Like this is, this is, there's no power involved here. It's just like, it's, it's all about how thick the air is. So you have to think of it differently. Um, all right. So we have height next and height is also confusing. So I'm going to run through this. So height, if it's set to zero, uh, basically the height is going to be everywhere. It's going to fill up the entire world. So the whole world is going to be foggy that you're in. Like if I look up, it's going to be foggy. If I look down, it's going to be foggy. Everywhere I go is going to be foggy. As soon as I set this to like one, you're going to see what it does is it creates like a horizon. And what you can do, it took me a while to figure this out because it's, it's kind of weird. You can think of this as like um, if you ever like taking a walk in the morning or whatever, there's like that morning mist that's on the ground, you know, like that's kind of what this is. So like this is like this is the mist on the ground and it's like how high do you want this mist, right? So as I start to bring this up, you're going to see that when it reaches, you see it's starting to creep through here now. The height of it is going to go, go, go. It's maybe like 400 or something. And this is accurate to like the units in your scene. So if I, you know, if I have a hundred centimeter uh, cube in here or something, that's, that's pretty much what it is. So if I go um, 500, you know, it's going to keep going up. Let's do 700. Nope. 700. Um, it's, yeah, it's just going to keep going up and up and up. And you see it just rises, rises, rises. And then if your camera goes below it, then you can kind of see that it's, yeah, it's like super foggy and like what the heck is happening? <laughs> because it's like, yeah, you're looking through the fog and that's where you have to play with your attenuation again. Um, so that's all that is. It's basically, it's like a blanket of fog. And then how high do you want that blanket of fog to be? Um, and then this other one, I don't know, it's kind of also a little bit, okay to me but it's just horizon blur so it's just how blurry the horizon is so if i come back down here i'll try to get you to look at it. but if you just look at this horizon and if i put this horizon blur to like five it just kind of blurs it and makes it more natural is all it is um so it's yeah it can be used as a uh, save you a step in compositing is kind of how i look at it um use transform super simple all that is is basically like instead of using this height, you can just drag the actual object. So I can literally just come here and just drag. Um, oh, sorry, I actually have to have it on. Yeah, so if you if you actually just drag the object, it'll just move it for you. So that's all that is. So it's like, yeah, it's a little more intuitive, I guess, to do it this way, to actually just move it that way. Um, and then if you don't want it, you can just pipe it in manually. But I, I can't imagine uh, really ever wanting to do that. So yeah, you're just moving the redshift environment. Um, okay. So that's the fog. It's, it's pretty simple again. Uh, and also just remember if it's at zero, it's going to fill up everything. Um, all right. And then the last thing I think is, uh, just more tricks, I guess, um, for you guys to know. So if we go to the third one, um, once again, I just have like the simple stoplight, same setup, um, let me just make sure that my uh, lights are turned on here. Is my volume? Let me just turn the volume off. All right. So actually, you know what? Just put the volume on. Um, let's create a redshift environment. Once again, same thing. We're automatically, geez Louise, it's because I went to, hold on. <laughs> it's because I went to one instead of point one. Point one. Um, so right away, we're going to see the fog, uh, which is fine. That's what we expect. Um, 
but then like what if we want to like change the shape of this fog what if we want this fog to be right now the shape is kind of being dictated by this cone here right by these like cones that are on top but what if i just wanted to control this more um well you can actually do that uh through this cool um setting which i use all the time not just for fog but just for lights in general um, so let me select my lights again, and I'm actually going to switch these lights to be, um, oh, they are area lights. So I, I switch them to be an area light, and then um, they're on disk, right? But then down here you have something called spread, and spread is basically like, yeah, just how, how far the light spreads out versus how narrow it is. So if I come here and if I move the spread down, you're going to see it's going to concentrate it kind of more. Right, so you can almost get like even like a laser look if you were to really like mess with it, or or a wrestling ring. I guess it could be a a cool wrestling ring too, <laughs> neon wrestling ring. Um, but yeah, that's very pretty much all it does. It, it like it it basically defines your lights a little bit more um, based on uh, yeah the spread of it. Uh, and this just just separate tip. Um, this isn't just for fog. I mean, in lighting in general, like mess with your spread because it can really make stuff look better. Um, so that's that's one way to get more, yeah, focus lights, more concentrated lights. Um, and then the last one is like, well, what if I want this? What if I want this fog to be like broken up a little bit? How do I how do I get some variation in it? Um, so to get variation. Also really simple, um, if you go to utilities and then you go noise volume, take your noise volume, all this is, it's literally just noise that goes on top of, goes through uh, the volume. Let's put this on top of our environment and right away you can see that we're starting to get some variation in here. I find that this tool is it's, it's okay, but I, I find myself wishing that I could just plug in any old noise, but as of now, you can't do that. Um, I would imagine in the future you probably can. Um, so yeah, so you have, you know, how, how complex is it? Um, you have, uh, this is basically your power, you know, your contrast, I guess. Like, how are my whites and my blacks? That's what this is. So you just kind of have to dial it in. That looks like garbage. But I guess for, for previewing purposes, it's good. Um, you know, what's the scale? Uh, if you move it to the left, it gets fatter. And then if you move it to the right, it gets smaller. Stuff you guys are probably all familiar with. Um, and then you just have a few different options, um, which again, you're probably familiar with um, in regards to the look of the, um, uh, the noise. Um, the one last thing uh, that I wanted to show you is at the bottom here. So if you want to actually like make it move, you can just come here and just go constant and it, that'll just kind of like run the, run the, the noise through it. And I couldn't figure out what the difference between constant scale and user time is. Um, not really sure. Uh, but they seem to do the same thing. I thought maybe it was a timeline thing, like over time it would change, but didn't seem to do that. So if you guys know, definitely, uh, would be interested. Um, and that's it, man. Uh, noise is, uh, fog is super easy and can get you really nice results uh, really quick. Um, and I would recommend uh, putting in a little bit here and there whenever you can. Um, so awesome. Uh, also, uh, if you guys have made it this far in the video, um, there is this model for free that I'm going to give you guys. Uh, it's yours. You can have it. And then if you're interested on how I made it, how I made these lights and everything, um, you can check out uh, the hotline how to on uh, it's episode two. I go through and someone asked how to make this. So I show kind of how to make the lights and everything. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you on the next one.